Hi everyone! Welcome to my first interview for my vlog, Living My Greatest Life. I'm very happy and honored to have beside me the person who I credit for healing me, for my transformation, and for giving me the life I have now. But first of all, let's get to know him. He was previously an engineer by profession. He's a master of several martial arts, eight types of yoga, 12 types of meditation. He's a world expert in energy healing, who has traveled to over 100 countries, healing over 400,000 people. He's our chief healing scientist here in the village, who has developed the Be Well Science method, the modality that we use here for healing our clients. So without much further ado, I'm really very happy and honored. Thank you, Master Delta. Thank you, Rory, for inviting me to your show. Thank you, Master. And so I'm really very happy to have you here. So what I'd like to talk about as, the, as my first interview, Master, is that, well, you know my story, and I've already told my story in an earlier vlog, mm -hmm. that there was a time in my life where I had absolutely everything, everything anyone could ask for. And yet, in, in having all that thing, I plunged into a deep uh, darkness, and I couldn't get out of it. So I know that a lot of our viewers now can relate to that journey that I went through. And I'd like to ask you, because you helped me a lot, you really transformed me. And how do these people, how is it possible that you have everything in your life and yet you plunge deep down and, and find this emptiness that nothing or no one in this world can fill? Uh, this goes to the experiences of more advanced human beings who have mm -hmm. saturated their performance mm -hmm. in life, in whatever they're doing, whether career or family life mm -hmm. or social life. It happened to many saints, including even St. Francis of Assisi. Jesus had the 40 days, 40 nights in the desert. So with the Buddha, Muhammad, they spent many uh, days in the desert called arid. Okay. Aridity of life is dryness or the lack of meaning sometimes. Even saints and masters go through that. I went to that same per uh, experience. So mm -hmm. when I saw you and met you and you were saying mm -hmm. that you are in a deep, abyss and I said okay it's like a dark night of the soul so I had look at uh, my book mm -hmm. and there's some references about your experiences similar to a lot of my students mm -hmm. who had the same uh, dark night of the soul and I know it is something that you have saturated and went to a plateau mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. and whatever you do it does not anymore ascend the curve so it started to dip it's like when you project Bullet is like the projectile, the last leg is like deepening, you know, it's plateau and then going down. So I see you going down, not only burn out and devitalize because you have worked so hard in your career. It looks like you have exhausted your desire to do anything mm -hmm. because you ran out of desires. You ran out of things that would bring you higher into a higher ascent mm -hmm. to higher meaning and spiritual heights. So that's called the dark night of the soul, mm -hmm. which is sometimes different from depression. Mm -hmm. And I've written a lot of the cases in my book, Beyond the Dark Night of the Soul, and people can study that if they want to know what symptoms mm -hmm. are for the dark night versus depression or versus uh, what we call uh, anxiety or, or fatigue or something. And, and so I, I look at you and I saw that your soul had wanted this drama mm -hmm. and imposed the dryness or aridity to your life as if there's nothing can satisfy you anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything does not feel meaningful mm -hmm. and everything you do doesn't mean much except maybe getting more money and getting more fame. But aside from that, there's nothing more left mm -hmm. for you to desire. And so you are in a deep curve. And I think uh, from there on, we did a lot of healings. Mm -hmm. And I was mentoring you about the things that you can see as the framework by which you can move forward and upward. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how it was with me. But Master, my question is, does everybody go through this journey? Uh, as you advance your life, especially as you mature more as a soul, you know, become an older soul, uh, there's a tendency that most people who are in that level would go into the dark night of the soul as a part of the soul's rhythm mm -hmm. to awaken the personality to do something new and different. It's like a disruption, mm -hmm. a breaking through mm -hmm. or a game changer, you might say that, to be able to disrupt your life from the normal plateau and dipping down, to disrupt back mm -hmm. to life 
that has more meaning and a higher purpose and more of an expansion of consciousness. It's a soul-infused drama for the soul to awaken the personality and the ego, for you to change course or, or shift paradigm. Okay, so how do you get out of it, Master? How does one get out of it? Uh, the best thing really is to find a spiritual mentor and a spiritual teacher or even a life coach if you don't have a mentor to ask the right questions. Why are you having this? Is it because of money? Is it because of uh, fatigue? Is it because of stress? Or if you say that, no, I'm healthy, I'm eating well and I'm exercising, I'm doing gym work. I'm not that really unhappy because I'm satisfied with my work. My family is supported to me. But still you feel that emptiness as if your meaning collapse, your desires becomes nil and uh, evaporates. Mm -hmm. So you would say that it's uh, unexplainable. Even if it's, it's not responding to medical diagnosis or psychological diagnosis, it's not even in the book for uh, psychology or psychiatry that these DSM uh, manual does not show this, uh, this ease or discomfort. That's why I call it a non-medical responder because it doesn't respond to medication or antidepressant. It, it's an internal condition where you cannot medicate or do a talk therapy. Mm -hmm. It's about an inner yearning and longing for something new and different that is not sadness. It's a spiritual apathy. It's a meaninglessness that nothing can satisfy you anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So, Master, you know, there are many life coaches. I've had really, really great life coaches. But what's the main difference between a life coach and a mentor? A life mentor is a little bit wiser. Mm -hmm. deeper in terms of uh, the spectrum of looking at things. Mm -hmm. life, life coach can be somebody who is good in questioning you and unfolding your issue and discovering your loopholes and mm -hmm. your pitfalls in life. And then once you discover that, then the job of the life coach ends. And so the life mentor is a little bit more profound in the mm -hmm. sense that they have deeper experiences mm -hmm. It's not about just questioning you about your life. It's just looking through you, looking through your soul, looking at your uh, blind spots and traps, which nobody can see yet, even you yourself. You see, there are four quadrants in looking the Johari window, as they say. Mm -hmm. The first quadrant is you know and others know about you. Mm -hmm. The second quadrant is you know, but others do not know. It's a facade. Mm -hmm. It's just you who knows, but not too many knows about you. The third quadrant is you don't know and others know. It's a blind spot. Yes. So the life coach can help you there because mm -hmm. they would be searching, giving you search questions which you will answer and they will unfold into realization mm -hmm. by you or by the, the life coach until you can reconcile what others don't know, what others know and you don't know that you will reconcile that you start to know. But the fourth quadrant is difficult because it's what others do not know and you do not know, mm -hmm. but the life mentor would know okay. because they have seen a bigger spectrum of life and they can include you in those framework, but which you don't know even yourself and others do not know about you and your next steps, the mentor would know. So a mentor is somebody who has a bigger experience in life, mm -hmm. has seen a lot of uh, life's profile, mm -hmm. which you can belong into and they will look at your profile within that bigger framework of human development or I call it spiritual initiation. And as, as, I, as they see that you are now growing and maturing as a soul, mm -hmm. they will put you to a level of development that you are now in that new development. That's why you are growing your soul mm -hmm. to a new level of, it's like graduation, mm -hmm. initiation, saturation point, so that the next one is you have become a new student of life again on that new level. So that's called initiation. Mm -hmm. So as you grow your life forward, as you saturate your career, as you have fulfilled your family duties and you have had a good social life and you have enough success, you are already religious or even non-religious, you are looking for something that is new that will satisfy your next paradigm shift and your next consciousness level. And the soul will try to give you a little bit of drama and even sometimes trauma, mm -hmm. and sometimes somebody dies in your family or you lose your career, mm -hmm. you got fired, you got bankrupt, or some big things happen, and that's the time you start to search. Okay. So you become a spiritual seeker, 
uh, a purpose seeker. And that's why you need that mentor to guide you step by step to be able to see the more profound part of your, who you are, yeah. not just what you are. The life coach can give you what you are. The mentor would now elucidate who you are, and that's where your search begins into awakening the power of your soul as well. So a life mentor is a little bit uh, more mature and seasoned, uh, I'd say, being, teacher, and somebody who is a guide who can give you all the most important questions in life that would lead to your unknowns. Most of the questions might be unknowns. Mm -hmm. And you would say, how do I don't know all those answers? A life, man, life coach, you have an answer for their questions. Mm -hmm. A life mentor, sometimes you run out of questions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't understand their questions. Yeah, and, and that's really true because the moment I stepped here, three years ago, the moment I stepped here, I was like, I'm home. You know, I really found it and I've been, I've been growing in leaps and bounds. Now, for all those out there, how do they know if they found the right mentor? Like the mentor is somebody who can let you feel nervous and awkward. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Because you know that they know a lot yeah. and they can deepen your perspective about who you are. So sometimes you don't want to expose your weaknesses and blind spots, but they will discover it whether you like it or not. They master will really <laughs> discover all those weaknesses. <laughs> the life coach does have to have more questions to, okay. for them to grasp who you, what you are. Uh, yeah. But who you are, uh, the mentor would know by looking through your energy centers, mm -hmm. uh, looking at your soul and your development, and also the next steps that you might have to travel, they would have the inspiration to see that. Mm -hmm. Another thing is a mentor is the one who can really give you all the perspective you have to see mm -hmm. in choices and selection of your decisions. Because mm -hmm. most people would just say yes or no decision. The mentor will give you things you never expect to go through, which will give you new choices, not from your old choices. A life coach can give you from selection of all the old choices that you had presented to them. Mm -hmm. A new mentor will give a new perspective that is more synthesized that would give you an idea that oh, I never expected that you, I can be that or mm -hmm. that I can do that or there's a bigger possibility if I do not use my old mm -hmm. style or old self. It makes a lot of your old best practices obsolete. Mm -hmm. So the mentor is somebody that makes all your past kind of obsolete. Yeah. Because they, they would give you something that is like called a quantum jump. Mm -hmm. It's like the leapfrog of consciousness or the quantum leap of consciousness where you jump. Uh, the mentor will let you jump. The life coach will let you walk or sometimes run. But the mentor definitely is a jump. It, it's a life jump. And, and, and they will have a new perspective which you never thought before. And sometimes they are b very painful because it does... Sometimes obliterate a lot of the so-called truth that you have realized about your life. And you're starting to see the obsolescence of your life by how they present the next step. The next step is so big that all the great things you have done will become so small. Mm -hmm. And just like the pain that you will experience when they give you that presentation. But it's also the biggest uh, hope and opportunity that you can be potentially doing those big games in your life. And as you say, you can live your greatest life yes. doing that. Yes, that is so true. Master is really going to bullseye your weaknesses. And whether you like it or not, you're really going to transform. And it is a painful journey. But one thing I have to say, Master, really, you're very kind. Thank you. Even if Master has like, ripped you apart, he's always there supporting you. At the end, you really feel just so grateful, just so grateful. And you can feel yourself expanding. But at least when they kick your butt and you fall, they put, give you a parachute. Yeah, a parachute. parachute to fall. And he's there to catch you, really. Because we have a healing science yes. that does really eradicate many of the illusions of the mind, what yes. you think about yourself, uh -huh. you're famous, you're great. Mm -hmm. And then you see that there are bigger things to do that is not only how famous you are or how rich you are. Something that is not about money and fame anymore. And that's like, wow, yeah. you don't have the currency yet to do that. And that, that is where you need to work forward. And that's great mm -hmm. because you become, again, a, a school uh, a student of life and I think that is like the great feeling that you have so much things to learn ahead mm -hmm. because when you saturate in your profession mm -hmm. if you're the best in your profession you think that you're the best and then you're not growing anymore and that's the time that 
the soul will kick your butt yeah and then you fly and then you have to ascend rather than yeah. descend yeah and you realize that you have endless possibilities in your life so you here i've learned so much i've learned so many things that i didn't think i could do before so i really i've grown in leaps and in bounds but master what about those people out there who are not as fortunate as me who have been searching and they cannot find their mentor i mean how will they go through this whole journey of theirs? i think they can contact you and you just process them contact according me. process me. them according to what you've done okay. with me or at least they can maybe ask you what books you've used from my books yes. from my 12 books mm -hmm. what had helped you a lot so you can you can just guide them another thing is sometimes you need a sabbatical leave from your profession mm -hmm. sometimes you need a vacation from your loved ones vacation yeah. from your work vacation mm -hmm. from your money and your fame because mm -hmm. it gives you a new perspective about who you are when you are not in the limelight of fame and money and glory and so on. It gives you again who you are in a very simplistic way and humble way. And that's the time you see, oh my gosh, I've been famous at the level, but when I'm out there, nobody, nobody even appreciate me because I have to get respect from an, another path mm -hmm. rather than from the old profession. So mm -hmm. you start to question even your own, is this your highest dignity or integrity in life? Mm -hmm. Or can you do something that even get another respect level that is not just about your past? Mm -hmm. So you start talking about your past, but you have to start talking about your new vision. How great your vision more than what you've done in it before. And another thing is, aside from taking a vacation from your loved ones, mm -hmm. which will always cling to you and need you. And it feels good sometimes when they need you, you will feel good about mm -hmm. saving everyone. And in the work, if you're the boss, you're trying to give instruction to everyone. It feels powerful. You go into a surrendering mode and powerless mode to so distress, detoxify, and find a newer meaning that is not connected to your money, power, and family. A new definition. I would say rebooting yourself, reinventing yourself, uh, redesigning your, your new pathways, and putting a new benchmark, a new landmark where you are going based on the new you. You need to learn and learn and relearn mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. that is not connected to the titles and labels and accolades mm -hmm. that you have received. And that is a fresh start. Mm -hmm. It's, I would say, uh, rebooting mm -hmm. and refurbishing and eventually re-engineering yourself and then refining yourself. So you need a retreat that is not disturbed by your old self, your old connections, mm -hmm. and that you renew yourself and you need something that refresh your, mm -hmm. your perception about your new you, your greatest life ahead mm -hmm. should be reboot and reset. It's like a, in, instead of global reset, mm -hmm. individual reset. I, I, I think uh, everyone who has been in a high position and enjoying the glory of their position and, and money and reputation and family life, social life. Mm -hmm. We need to move away from those to not be defined by the glory of the past mm -hmm. because you are traversing the future, which is a new sets of mm -hmm. value, a new sets of thinking, a new sets of emotions, a new sets of desire, a new mm -hmm. sets of framework of mm -hmm. your life philosophy. You have to have a new framework mm -hmm. by which there are non-negotiables which were okay when you are in the old self, yeah. but with the new standard, they are not okay anymore, and they're maybe obsolete for your new level of development. And a mentor can give you the checklists. If not, uh, I think they can talk to you and ask you, "How did you do it?" You know. And I think people have to go rural. Sometimes going rural mm -hmm. elim eliminates that aspect of. Renewing yourself in the same house, in the same room, the same people around you, I don't think it's easy to reboot. Mm -hmm. You need to step away and then go yourself, uh, be, bring yourself into a sabbatical leave vacation for yourself, not for anyone. And I think that's a best uh, scenario for you to gift yourself a reboot, a renewal, and also a refresher. I would say a refresher to know who you are because people forget who they are. They've been connected to a lot of what they are, and they die knowing what they are, like their profession, how much money they have, how many fans they have, their entertainment uh, icons. But then you need to assess even whom are you going to live with for the rest of your life, who are really, really 
your superheroes who can really cover your back. Most people would know, I don't like to live with this person. I don't like to live with this guy. But they don't know who then is your best ally to be with you for the rest of your life. People have to ask this question, which is not just family life members. It can be the best person who will give you the best boosts of your next step. And they should ask this question. Who will they be and who are they becoming to achieve that greatest life? And that question should be sincerely answered when they are alone. Nobody will praising them. Nobody giving them money or tap on their back. Them and, and th that's why even the avatars like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, they have to separate themselves from their family, loved ones, their disciples, to be alone in the desert, to just contemplate and meditate to know more about their next mission. So searching your next mission, you have to do introspection, renewal, alignment to your soul. And I think that's a, a, one of your experiences I've seen that you have aligned to your soul. Wow, wow, that's a lot of deep words of wisdom from Master. And I'm sure that's a lot for all of you to think about. But Master, I have one last question. Does the journey ever end? Well, I always say that I'm still a schoolboy in the school of life. I have not really, really, really gone through a lot of things because I know I still have a lot of things to learn. So in terms of learning, we will not end learning. We will not end growing. Because that's the purpose of life, really, to grow and grow and grow to a level where even you can recognize yourself at the end. is beyond your comprehension at the level. It's beyond your expectations. And that is where jumps happen. Okay. And, and I, I think uh, one of the purposes in life is to really keep on growing, keep on evolving. Whatever life will bring you, it has to be the growth that is the bottom line. Well, the money is a side effect of working hard and working intelligently and having good luck for mm -hmm. money. The fame is a side effect of working intelligently and you deserve it. Uh, the good family is also something you deserve when you be a good member of the family and, and do your duties. So those are doable with some skill sets and the right attitude. But in terms of your soul's purpose, it's always a lot of abstruse, unknown things. Because the journey towards the soul is ever expanding because the soul does connect to your unconditional life, which is expansive and, and very, uh, I would say, a quantum leap of consciousness, which you cannot perceive at your level. That's why it's always good to grow to the level and you realize yourself again, who you are, and then you have another subject to learn who you are again in a bigger and bigger scheme and bigger scale. And... You need a group to be able to do that. If you were alone, you will saturate again, and then you become, uh, you have a dark night of the soul again, and then you have to search again for a mentor or a group where your life will start to be more meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the greatest things that I've done to a lot of people like you is to bring them to a group where the group stimulates their next step, group that are more advanced. Because if you go back to less advanced people, it will bring you down again because their needs are lower than yours. So you're again the provider. Like the Philippines, this is like a problem because if you're the best in the family, you all become the provider, provide, provide, until you burn out. Like for me, I have to extract myself from my family because I provided them for a long, long time. So I went to the United States, I went to India, I went to the Himalayas, I explored life that is not bound by family life. And that's where I really grew a lot of, you say, greater measures. And so the journey continues, but the milestones also are set. So every journey has a milestone, a landmark by which you achieve. And then if you plateau again, your desire disappear and you become again that depressed and apathy and dark night. So you get to disrupt again and aim for a bigger purpose. And then that's again your high intensity of learning, growing, expansion, and just happy working and so on. And then you plateau again in the next milestone. And so you, you keep on doing that, like the growth. But most people, when they plateau, they go to a dip and they do not disrupt. So they go back and then they just fade away. And that's where disease happens. Uh, and disease happens more and more, depression, uh, bankruptcy, all kinds of sufferings and troubles. So you need, when you're 
when your trajectory is going down already, you should start to look for a solution. Do not go too low, because it's not easy enough for the gravity of fall. It's not easy to pick up anymore. As, as you are older, you have more diseases, you are weaker, it's harder to be resilient, and then people are not anymore paying attention to you when you're old, except your own relative. So that's like a feeling of being useless. So when you feel that you're on the plateau and you slide into a deep curve, please, anyone who's listening to me now, make sure that you disrupt your curve to go back into another purpose and new desires to excel or a new level to, to play and select a new game to play and you will fill your life again with purpose and meaning. Without usefulness in the next step, you will just become happy with social life and ballroom dancing and, and traveling around the world. It does not give you the inner satisfaction that soul needs. So it will give you more and worse feeling of not being able to solve your problems and your sense of failure and so on. So you need to follow again the soul and what else can I do that is more meaningful. You always use meaning and usefulness as a barometer. It's not that social life <clears throat> that you deserve is not the more accolades that make you fill up your ego or your feeling. It's about meaningful service, usefulness, and avocation and calling is something that you need to look for as you age your soul because something that even you don't get paid, you will still do it. You can excel in a profession, but certain things become your avocation or your calling. And that is the pursuit for the meaningful life you deserve to live your greatest life. That calling should be satisfied as you grow older. Okay, wow. Thank you so much, Master. And with that, guys, I hope that yeah, you've learned a lot. And I learned a lot just listening to Master. And, you know, listening to him really makes me feel so blessed to be here. I'm just really so grateful and so blessed to be part of um, this ashram, this village, where I am personally mentored by Master. And I, I forgot yes, to say, yes, yes. the healing is the game changer. The Without healing. the healing, I think all talk therapy will not yeah. work. Because if you're really blocked and you're so depleted, so burned out, and your yes. emotion is so big and your heart becomes small, without the healing uh, of uh, healing sessions and the help of the mm -hmm. healing scientist and healer and the mentor or your healing specialist, I think you can still recover, but it takes a long, long time. And it might give you a risk of not being able to recover fast enough. Mm -hmm. You should have the speed of recovery should be faster than speed of decay. Yeah. And so the healing component in my relationship with you is probably one of the, the key yeah. uh, component of your uh, recovery and your ascent to higher spiritual heights. Yes, because I reached the depths the depths really of darkness and really it's master's healing. You can really feel it, guys. You know, you can really feel it. You're, you recover physically, emotionally, mentally, and then your, to your total being just, you know, you end up really being very, very strong and transformed. So with that, uh, I think that's a lot for now. And I'd like to thank Master. Thank you. And uh, guys, feel free to contact me. Any insights you have, comments, questions, just you can text me or uh, in Facebook or in IG, or you can email me in Rory, uh, in Rory Q at uh, withglobal.com. And Master, thank you very much. If Bless you have you. a lot of questions, maybe we can ask Master <laughs> for another interview. You know, and um, well, it's always a great joy and a great learning experience. I think Rory, you have chosen master. the right uh, work of disseminating you, your experience because you see, sometimes people are talking about parroting about other experiences of others they read from the book. This is really you, yeah. so it's not a parroted story. It's yeah. like your narrative that came from your own experience, and there's no greater lessons in life than your own experience. So congratulations. Thank you, Master. And on my part, guys, I just want to say that everything in life is a choice. Everything in life is a choice, you know, so you don't need to suffer. You don't need to go to the depths of darkness. You know, just follow, like what Master said, uh, get a mentor, you know, heal yourself, right? Get some healing, get a mentor who will guide you to your next path in life and make that choice because when you do make that choice, you too can live your greatest life. So thank you and I'll see you next time. <music>